Hi guys, it's Amber, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is now week 14 of my fertility episode, so we've got another four left. Um, pff, flying by, absolutely flying by. Um, so, if you are new here, then thank you for joining us. Um, this is all a bit crazy and a bit wild. So, a couple of weeks ago, I told everybody that I had been going through IVF in secret and hadn't told anybody that I was doing it. Um, that didn't work, so this week I have decided to do a bit of a QA and a about everything to do with our IVF. Um, so I asked my Instagram followers, if you're not following me on Instagram then pause and head over there now and click on that follow button and while you're at it also make sure that you pause this video and click the subscribe button down below so you're notified every week when a new one of these um, goes live. So I asked all of my Instagram followers um, to ask me any questions that they had to do with our IVF uh, or my infertility but specifically the IVF really considering that is the topic of conversation at the moment if you like and kind of the most prevalent thing at the moment. Um, so what I have done is I have collated all of, collated, is that a word? Um, I think it is, but I have basically put together all of the most common uh, questions and I'm going to answer them for you. So I'm going to go through them, answer them all as well as I can, um, but these really were the most common questions. So without further ado, as always, go make yourself a cup of tea, sit down, get yourself all comfy and we will talk about all things vagina. Hi guys, welcome back. How cute is this mug? This mug was gifted to me by my lovely friend Victoria um, at Cozy and Country, so I'm going to link her Instagram below. Um, she gifted this to me a little while ago with a candle and honestly it is just beautiful, I love it. Like, I'll see if you can see, I'm not sure whether or not you'll be able to see the detail without me changing the focus on the camera. But it's just so pretty and I absolutely love it. So that is my mug of choice today with my typical English breakfast tea. Um, because now my IVF is over, I can drink as much caffeine as I want again. Which is excellent when you're a bit of a tea addict like me. Um, so like I say, today I'm doing a bit of a QA. and a So I'm going to go through all the questions that I have and, or well, that you have. Go through them all and hopefully give you all some insightful answers if you like. Um, so let's crack on. Okay, so first of all, this question, have you been to see a clairvoyant or a medium? Um, no, is the short answer to that, I haven't. It is something I really wanna do. Um, my mum used to go see a clairvoyant when I was younger and some of the things that she came out with were scarily true. Um, I am in two minds as to how I feel about it, um, about whether or not I think they play on it or whether or not they don't. Um, I don't know, there's quite a few things with it that I'm a bit, unsure about but I do really really want to go um I haven't as of yet as there's part of me that as much as I want to go there's part of me that thinks that if they say anything too positive then I might cling to that and I don't really want to do that I don't want to come out of there and have say something like I don't know there is a child in the future and this that, and the other and actually what it means is that my friend's going to get pregnant and not me um <laughs> No, I don't know what they say really, I don't know if that's even something they'd say, but I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, uh, one basket and I don't want to come out feeling overly positive um, or beaten down and a bit negative either. So at the moment I don't think I'm quite in the right headspace to go, um, but it is, something, it is something that I would like to do in the near future. I have got a number of somebody that I would like to go see, um, so we'll see. But at the moment the answer to that is no. The next question is, what supplements did you or are you taking? So, I was taking um, Pregnacare, I believe it's called. It's one of the vitabiotics, um, and it's the trying to conceive one, so it has everything like your folic acid in it, um, but it basically has everything that you need in one tablet, apparently. Um, so that's what I was taking. I was taking those every day, and I was taking them for three months leading up to the IVF. I haven't stopped taking them. Um, I have been a bit lax on it, which is a bit naughty, but I've not been taking them every day since it failed. Um, that is something that I'm getting back on. But I was also taking some bud fertility um, supplements, if you like. I was taking those as well. They were called Fertility Formula, off the top of my head. Um, they are all downstairs, otherwise I would show you. But I have shown them on my Instagram before, and I will do that during the week. Um, I will show you them. And then on top of that, I was also just taking some cod liver oil 
supplements. Um, other than that, I wasn't really taking anything. I think this time I would like to up the supplements I was taking. Um, I think there are certain things that I would like to try. Um, if you do have any recommendations of supplements um, in the lead up to the IVF, then yeah, that would be really appreciated. So if you can drop me a comment and let me know, fab, thanks. Um, but yeah, so at the moment I would take bud, cod liver oil and Pregnicare, um, but that was it. Marco was also taking the Pregnicare for men, the Vitabiotics for, again, trying to conceive, but for him, um, he has now started taking, I wanna call it CQ10, COQ10 or something like that, I don't know. Again, I'll link it down below. Um, and another thing that I can't say, but it's a red tablet. Like I say, I can't say like it's a secret. I don't mean it like it's a secret. I can't say as in I can't pronounce it. It begins with an L and it's things that you get in tomatoes and things like that. Um, but it's a supplement that again is meant to really help with sperm quality. Um, sperm quality, morphology, things like that. So that I will link them all below and I'll also show you them again on my Instagram this week. Um, but they are all the different supplements that we're taking. Other than that, nothing. But like I say, any supplements that kind of do help with female fertility and on top of that help with male morphology, let me know, drop me a comment, send me a message on Insta, whatever. I want to know. I want to buy them all. So, excellent. That's that one. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question. Korg, I'm right in there. Why did it fail? Um... <laughs> Okay, so I received a call from my clinic last week. I don't know if it was something I spoke about in my last video. I can't remember. I can't remember if it was before that video or after. Um, but I received a phone call from my clinic and basically there was no reason why it failed. It was just a case of luck of the draw. Um, I wasn't responding overly well to my medication, which wasn't necessarily the reason it failed but it does mean that next time I will be on different medication um, but other than that it was fine like the sperm quality was fine my egg quality was fine it was just unfortunately luck um, I don't know why only two fertilized they couldn't give me an answer to that they didn't know why which for me is a bit of a positive like it's a positive and a negative all rolled into one because I think well I want answers but at the same time I'm glad that there was nothing glaringly wrong if that makes sense um so yeah at the moment it is just a case of luck um and I think that's all it came down to really so that's why it failed it didn't fail for any particular reason it's just you know the chances of it working first time are quite slim the chances of it working at all are slim really arguably it's about 33 percent um but working first time is something like 18 percent so we didn't expect it to work really but yeah, that's why there was no specific reason as such. Okay, the next question. Do you wish that you had done anything differently? Um, no. No, because I don't want to sit here and beat myself up over it. And I know that if I can identify something that I should have done or could have done, that I would just blame myself over and over and over again which I don't think is very healthy and isn't very good for me. Um, I do wish I'd lost that little bit more weight. My BMI was in what it should have been, um, but it was at the top end of that scale rather than being somewhere quite satisfactory in the middle. So before our next round, I am aiming to lose weight. That is something that I'm documenting on Instagram at the moment. Um, since it failed, I've lost four pounds. Um, but I think, yeah, all together, I could do with losing about two stone. I won't lose two stone. Um, and there's no way I'll lose two stone before we go again. But, sorry, my hair is really annoying me. I'm sorry, I just keep brushing it. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing really that I can say I definitely wish I had have done. But not enough to blame it, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to get hung up on that. Um... So I am trying to change my lifestyle rather than going on a diet. So that is something that I'm working on at the moment. But other than that, no, not really. Um, I cut out drinking. I cut out everything. Like I cut out all my caffeine. Um, I stopped eating so much red meat. There was so many, so many different things that I had done. Like I, like my diet, 
I was eating as though I was already pregnant. So it would be things like, like I wasn't eating pate, which is like my favorite thing in the world. Um, and there were so many things that I did that I don't really think I could have done any more other than lose that bit of weight. So no, not really. I think, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So this time I'm not gonna be so strict on myself. I'm not gonna stop drinking until I start my stims. Um, because I think you have to allow yourself to have a life. I'm not a big drinker. I'm a big drinker in the sense of when I drink, I drink. But, and I do like a drink, but I don't come home every night and have a glass of wine. I don't drink every weekend. Um, and I think it's Christmas. I don't want to be restricting myself too much because I want a life and I want to be able to enjoy myself. So I'm not going to go, no, I'm not going to have that chocolate that I really want and that I have every year. And no, I'm not going to have that camembert on Christmas Eve that we have every year. I'm not going to have that glass of wine. I'm not going to have that glass of Baileys. No, I'm not doing it. Um, so like I say, for me now, it's a bit of a lifestyle change that will hopefully help me on my way, but I'm also not going to sit and beat myself up over it. People get pregnant when they are morbidly obese and heroin addicts, and they fall pregnant. That me I understand this whole optimised fertility, and I will do that within reason. I am not going to drive myself crazy doing this. Not now you know if we get to round five round six round seven then maybe well maybe i'll be bankrupt but if we get to that point then maybe i'll see things a bit differently whereas at the moment i've done it where i've cut everything out this time i'm not going to cut everything out i'm going to live my life as normally as possible and keep my life really how it is because i don't you change things too much and your stress levels go through the roof and i think i'm not about that i don't want to be really stressed, I don't want to feel like I'm not allowed to enjoy myself, so I'm going to, I'm going to carry on doing the things I love um, until I need to stop it. I'm just going to try and lose a little bit of weight because that's the only thing I wish I'd done differently, really. Okay, the next question, what made you do IVF? Um, I didn't have a choice if I want a child of my own, quite literally. I found out that my fallopian tubes were blocked and they were then removed in March and if we want children of our own, IVF is the only way unless we do it through surrogacy or something like that, which at the moment I'm not doing. So that's what made me do it. Um, the fact that realistically I didn't have any other option to have a child. Um, so yeah, that's why. When did you decide IVF was right for you? Um, Okay, so yeah, that is a slightly different question. So, obviously when we found out that we were unable to have children of our own naturally, um, obviously there are different options. You Obviously you can look at things like your donor eggs. Um, I mean, all of that involves IVF, but you either realistically have a childless life, IVF or adoption. Um, for me, a childless life isn't something that at this stage I'm willing to accept or that I am willing to kind of resign myself to. Um, it is something having children is something that I am going to try my absolute hardest to have. Um, so I, yeah, yeah, adoption I think is amazing, but at the moment it's not something that I feel like I could do. Um, if the IVF doesn't work, then it is something that we would consider. I'm not going to say that we would do it. I think there's a lot to it. It's a very long, very hard process. So it isn't something that I'm going to sit here and go, yeah, if it doesn't work, we're definitely going to adopt. It isn't for everyone. Um, so IVF was kind of our only option on that front. Um, but I think we just knew. I think as soon as we were told that it was our only option, there was no, is this right for us? It was right, this is what we do this is what we need to do, so we'll crack on. I don't feel like it was really an option for me. Um, I know ultimately it is an option, you either do it or you don't, but for me, I felt like that was just the natural next step. There was no way that anything else was even coming into the equation. So as much as, like I still don't sit here and think it's right for me, like it's horrible, <laughs> um, but it's the right choice for us because ultimately it's the only way we're gonna get what we want, so. Yeah, it took us a long time to actually get round to it. I think we started 
we were diagnosed as infertile, if you like, in September 2018. That's when they found out my tubes were completely blocked. We'd been trying for nearly four years, so it was just a given that that's what we were going to do. Um, but we did wait a year, literally a year, before we then started actually doing the IVF, and that gave me time to kind of accept it, to deal with it, um, and make the relative decisions as well. So yeah we just kind of knew that that was the next step there was no all oh, maybe we shouldn't do this we were always going to do it it was just a question of when okay the next question what clinic did you use and will you use them again um we used actually i will talk a bit about our clinic so we used a clinic called abc ivf and they are part of create fertility um we will use them again i did really like abc i thought abc our nurse bridget her name was was well, she's a nurse, doctor, consultant. Um, she was an angel. Like, I, I I, loved her so, so much. She was so nice. Um, and from the word go, I just felt really looked after with them. And I think we were both really quite surprised at how nice they were and how straightforward everything was with them. There were no hidden costs. Everything was black and white. They were also a bit, uh, a bit cheaper as they do mild IVF. Um, where you're not on as much medication. So they do have quite strict entry requirements, if you like, but because it was only my tubes, we fit within that. Um, so yeah, we did get on really well with them. The, em the embryology side of things that create could be better, if I'm honest, but I generally really like them overall, and we will 100% go back to them. Um, I think I felt really comfortable, at no point did I feel like I couldn't ask anything, at no point did I feel like I was annoying when I was sending 500 emails asking this, that and the other, um, and I, I just felt looked after, like I didn't ever feel patronised, I didn't ever feel out of place, I just always felt really comfortable, and I think it is so invasive and it's such a hard thing to go through that you need to feel looked after. Um, and we did, I don't think there was anything, I, I literally have no complaints about it whatsoever other than the fact that it's in London and it took me ages to get to. Um, but, yeah, no complaints, no complaints at all. They have been fantastic from start to finish, so I do think if you're able to, it's definitely worth looking into using them, um, especially because of the amount of money that you save. So, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, we will go back to them again. Uh, we've already decided that if it doesn't work um, after they've changed my medication, um, then perhaps we will start looking elsewhere. But at the moment, yeah, at the moment, 100% satisfied and 100% would use again. Okay, next question. When do you think you will try again? Uh, we will hopefully be trying again end of January, early February. Um, I'm not going to keep it a secret this time. This time I am going to document the entire thing um, very publicly as I think as much as keeping it a secret had its benefits, it also made things so much harder. Um, but yeah, end of January, early February. So the clinic have said I had my withdrawal bleed uh, which stopped earlier this week and I will then they then want me to have a natural cycle, so that will hopefully be the end of December, so around Christmas time. Um, and then the following cycle I can start. So we'll go for our treatment consultation again in January, and then it will be all systems go then. But I'll be on different medications, so it will be different this time. Um, and I'm feeling positive about it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not... I'm nervous, of course, but at the minute I'm just I'm just a bit like, right, we'll just enjoy the lead up to it, we'll have the best Christmas ever, and that's it, when it's here, it's here, and we just crack on like we did last time. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it, I think it's a good amount of time, it's, you know, two, three months in between, um, and I just think that maybe then it's just a bit better, I think it's good timing then, it gives us time to sort a few, th a few things out and we can just go again, so yeah, I am looking forward to it, but end of January, early February all being quite hell, um, although knowing my cycle it'll end up being March, April time. I shouldn't say that, I'll only jinx it. But yeah, around then, and I am very much looking forward to it. Have you tried any alternative therapies? Yes. <laughs> um, 
Yes and no. I have tried Reiki. Um, I would have Reiki every now and again anyway beforehand um, and reflexology and that is also something that I would have beforehand. Um, I am very lucky in that one of my best friends is a holistic therapist and she is fantastic. Like, I'm not just saying that because she is my friend, she is amazing. Um, I get on really well with Reiki and um, reflexology. Reflexology is one of my favourite things ever to get done. Um, I find that it just really relaxes me. The woman is some kind of psychic, I don't know, crazy god person. She just, she will touch my feet and she'll go, you've been holding your wee in. And I do it all the time. I'll be there like I'm at work and I'm dying for a wee but I'm like, mm, I only got up half hour ago but I've drank two litres of water and I'm up and down and up and down. Um, and I do and I sit there until I'm literally about to burst for some strange unknown reason which is really bad but I do. Um, or she'll say to me, have you been feeling really tense here? And she just knows just by giving my feet a rub and she's just incredible. Um, but I really, really like that. I find it really relaxing. Um, and it just kind of balances everything. Um, I did make the mistake, I think, of not telling her that I was going through IVF. So I'm not sure whether or not that helped um, or not. I was careful not to go see her during stims. Um, but I don't know, in the lead up to it, I wonder whether or not it would have made a difference if I had have told her uh, if things would have been done differently I don't, I don't really know um with the reiki again i really find that quite liberating i think is the only word but like when it's actually ongoing i feel like i could just fall asleep um and it's really interesting i always see different colors and it's something that i think the first couple of goes i've never fully got into it i think there was one occasion where i did really get into it and it was quite emotional for me and then on other occasions it's been like I've been very conscious of it, I'm not the most spiritual person in the world and I think I found it quite hard to kind of just relax whereas this time I thought no I really am letting myself go on this um, and it was brilliant and I, the next couple of days I felt really emotional um, and I just felt like I needed to, one thing she said is you know you might just suddenly get a wave of emotion and you kind of have to let yourself feel that um, and I did and so I had it done on the Friday night and then on the Saturday all day I was just crying at the most random things um, and again on the Sunday, but then I just felt so much, I, I felt really lifted, um, and I do, I really, I really like it, I think even if you just get a nap out of it, like, it's just great, I really, really like it, um, I am hopefully going to be trying acupuncture, um, and I have thought about hypnotherapy, I don't know how I feel about hypnotherapy, um, but acupuncture is something that I definitely want to try, I think it's just, it's very expensive and to benefit from it, from what I've been reading anyway, really to benefit from it when it comes to IVF, you need it on a weekly basis. Um, and it looks like it's anything between 40 and 65 pounds, depending on who you go to see. Um, and it's just a bit of a rubbish situation because obviously you're forking out all this money for IVF that then doing that, you know, if I was to do that for the next 10 weeks, it's the best part of 400 pounds that I would be spending. Um, and I know that the end goal is worth it and I know that I'm saving money with my clinic um, but generally I don't know if I can justify it um, but I would really like to go and I think it is something that I've been looking at and I will definitely try acupuncture um, hypnotherapy though I'm not too sure on um, I would be really interested though to see if anybody else has tried different therapies, what therapies they have tried, whether or not they felt they benefited them. Um, so yeah, again, let me know in the comments below. Um, as yeah, I'd be really interested to see what different things you think are worth trying. What medication were you on and what were the side effects? So, I was on Benfola and I was on Cetratide. So they were my two injections. So Cetratide, I started taking on day five uh, and that was a morning injection and Benfola I was on from day one, well cycle day two and that was in the evening and I did that the whole way through. Um, I think, I can't remember the dosage, I think it was 150 of Benfola and 250 of Cetratide, I might be wrong, do not quote me on that. Um, I will find out and again I'll put it down below, um, but I did talk about it in my last video. Um, I actually thought they were okay. The Benfola I was a bit bloated on um, and I was tired 
but it wasn't that bad. And then as soon as the cetratide came in, that was a bugger when you injected that. So I injected that and it would sting and then it would go red and it would be all raised like it literally looked like a nettle sting and then it was itchy and it was horrible. It'd wear off after about 10, 15 minutes and it was, if you tried your best not to itch it, but it was, oh God, horrible, horrible, horrible. I hated it. Um, but generally it was okay. When the cetratide came along, that's when I started getting really bloated and I really struggled with that. Um, and I was very, very tired. I wasn't really very emotional or anything like that. I think, again, because it was quite a low dosage, um, I was quite lucky on the side effect front that I didn't really get any. Um, but yeah, my main thing was bloat uh, and I was very gassy. I was burping constantly. Um, but other than that, I didn't really have any side effects. It was just being tired. Um, my main thing came when I started on the progesterone. So I started that. Um, you to yeah, it was a progester progesterone progesterone project pro progesterone yeah progesterone um so it was when i started that when i started the tablets um i think they were called eutogesterone or something like that uh but they were progest protest oh my god i've said the word too many times now and now i can't say it pro progesterone progest oh my god what the hell do you ever get that where you say a word so many times and then it starts sounding really weird like if you say the word penguin Say the word penguin, right, I challenge you to do it now. Pause this video and say the word penguin and just keep saying the word penguin and it'll start sounding really strange. Really strange. Um, anyway, progesterone. That's it, progesterone. Oh my God. I'm losing it. Um, but yeah, it was the progesterone that caused me the biggest, biggest issue, if you like. Uh, that is minging. It was like a little tablet that you'd have to insert vaginally. Um, but obviously then it would melt. So you would get really manky discharge. Um, so you would be wearing a panty liner constantly, um, which wasn't very nice. Um, but that made me so tired, I can't tell you. Like, that was exhausting, really. I felt like I could just sleep constantly. Never wanted to wake up in the morning. Um, or I would get up and I'd do the slightest little thing and I would be knackered. I think on one day I'd woken up at about half eight, we'd walk the dog and that was it. I got back and I was like, no, I'm done. Um, and that was it for me. I was just constantly tired. So that was the main side effect for me. Other than that, there weren't really anything major. So it was, yeah, it was the tiredness, the bloat and the gas. And that was it, really. It wasn't too bad as far as side effects go, to be honest. I think I was quite lucky. Did you find the injections okay? Um, yeah, like I said, I think initially the build up to them was a lot harder than actually doing it. Um, so I think you build it up in your head and then when it actually comes to doing it, it's fine. So the very first one I did, so I'll show you how I do them. Um, yeah. So the Benfola was like a pre-filled pen, so that would, you'd turn it and then you would literally, so you'd get your stomach, you would pinch, well not that much, but you'd pinch a bit of your stomach and then you'd just pop it in there and inject it. Um, so it wasn't anything too bad really. Um, the Cetratide was harder because you had to mix it um, and that was a bit complicated and at first it took me a while to get my head around and I panicked because I think on one occasion I'd done it and a bit of the liquid had come out and it was just, I hadn't looked at how much was in there and I was panicking that I'd got rid of most of it, I hadn't, but um, that was the harder one. I think, that, like I say, the build up to it really is the worst, but the injections, if I'm honest, are the easiest bit of the entire process. Um, because they're straightforward, you're in control of it, yet after your egg collection you are not in control of anything. Um, so for me, that was the heart, like the easiest bit, sorry. Um, like I say, the cetratide, I was getting really itchy and it stung and that wasn't a very nice injection, but in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that bad. Um, and I wouldn't have minded if I had to do it for another few weeks. I think towards the end, my stomach was getting a bit like, I think my body really was getting a bit fed up of being prodded and poked. Um, and I remember the last couple of days, it was just sore because my stomach hurt and it just felt a bit bruised and it just got fed up of it and every time I put one in it was like ow like even though it wasn't hurting it was hurting and I remember going for a blood test um on the last I think it was this second to last day so the penultimate day of my 
um, stims and that really hurt and I'm not very good with blood tests anyway I've got to look the other way um, and I don't particularly like the feeling of it but they don't hurt whereas towards the end it just they were they were hurting and my injections were hurting and that's it I think my body just kind of was like I've had enough um, but it was okay other than that like I can't really complain about them I, I surprised myself at how straightforward they were the needles aren't like this they're not huge needles um, I think they're all quite small relatively small needles um, that once you do it you've done it and I do think it's actually easier to inject yourself because I think again you have control over it and once you just do it it's fine the first one I was I uh, didn't really want to do it but then once you've done it walk in the park so yeah I think the injections were all right like they weren't too bad at all if I'm honest um I was very pleasantly surprised okay um how many times would you try before you give up what a question to end on eh um I don't think I can really answer that question I think there's a lot of things that factor into that at the moment I would say I will not stop until it works um however I'm very aware that it might not work um at the moment a realistic answer is I will try as many times as my bank account al allows me to try so I will keep going until we just can't afford to do it anymore um you know depending on how many rounds you do depends on how much money you spend and as much as I can save up every time at what point is enough enough um and you have to bear that in mind like I have to bear in mind like we've not been on holiday this year and there's little luxuries if you like that we've cut back on um like Christmas we're not spending as much money as we usually would um birthdays things like that I can't necessarily splash out the way I want to um like putting in overtime at work to save up like there is going to come a point where financially we think right we stop now like we need a new bathroom um and that's not a want that's kind of getting to the point where it's okay we need to get this done now um and we've put it off and we'll put it off because of this um we could do with a new kitchen we're not going to but it's things like that that usually we'd be able to talk about and go right okay can we afford it yet yeah, realistically yet yeah, we can let's crack on things like that so you have to keep making sacrifices and I think there are only so many sacrifices you can make before it becomes unrealistic to continue to do so so I think at the moment a good few rounds um on top of that you've not only got the financial aspect but you've also got how many times my body will allow it um obviously I only have a certain amount of eggs my egg count is quite good I arguably have time on my side as much as I hate it when people say that to me I am 25 years old so I do still have a good few years in me yet um but there may become a point where my body is like no do you know what I don't want to do this anymore and I don't feel like I can do it Marco and I may decide that you know what every time it does this it takes its toll emotionally how many times can I go through the failure um, if it works, the carrying it to full term, I'll, we can't guarantee that that will happen. There are so many things that we can't guarantee are going to happen that we have to draw a line at some point. Um, whether that is because the emotional side of it has taken its toll, whether that's because the physical side of it has taken its toll, or whether or not the financial side of it has taken its toll, I don't know. Um, at the moment, we are willing to try as many times as we can until it works, but if it doesn't work again or it doesn't work again once we get to maybe four or five goes are we going to say enough is enough i don't know are we going to do this a second time and go enough is, enough is enough are we going to do this a tenth time and decide enough is enough like you don't know um and i find that a really hard question to answer because i don't have the answer because i don't know um so yeah i don't know but at the moment I have no intention of stopping until I have a child um, but whether or not that ever happens is another question and it's wonderful to be able to sit here and say that we will carry on until it works but it might not work and it might just not be our path so yeah that's quite a hard one <laughs> but yeah at the moment infinite but like I say you know eventually we'll run out of money eventually 
my brain will say no I can't do this anymore and eventually my body will say no I can't do this anymore or it might even be Marco it might be Marco that every time it fails if I feel like I did last time and there's only so many times I think you can take heartbreak and so he might get to a point where he says he doesn't want to do it anymore you don't you don't know um so unfortunately I can't answer that question but I hope I've explained why <laughs> I hope sorry if I haven't but I think yeah I can't answer it sorry but I don't know not much I can do about that that was a really ugly face sorry <laughs> god's sake okay so I hope that has answered all your questions. If you do have any more questions, then make sure that you drop me a comment below. Uh, send me a message on Instagram, whatever, but do make sure that you are following me on Instagram and that you have subscribed to this video. Uh, not to this video, that you have subscribed to my channel. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching me. It is always appreciated. Um, but yeah, my Christmas video, the first one, is going live in the next couple of days. Um, so that is decorating our Christmas tree. I can't promise it is going to be the best video in the world. It's the first time I've ever tried to do a video like it. Um, so I'm sorry if it's a bit naff. But I can only get better. So, um, yeah, so my fir the first video of my Christmas content goes live in the next couple of days. That is decorating the Christmas tree. Um, but then I have quite a few um, nice little videos just lined up for you over the next month. Christmas is my favourite time of year and I am buzzing. So, um, yeah, so... Anyway, like I say, make sure that you've subscribed. I'll see you in the next couple of days. Um, and I will see you during the week on Instagram. I'm always on my stories, so I'll see you over there. I am fully back in the game now. Um, I've had all my little post-IVF meltdown. So now everything, normal service has resumed. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Ciao. Bye.